Hi there, welcome to another edition of Equipping. I am your host, K. Jajai. Today, by God's grace, I want to share with you four spirits that must not rule over your life. Very essential, and we see them in the Word of God. The first one is the spirit of fear. I believe the spirit of fear is the devil's greatest weapon. Wherever the spirit of fear is, you need to understand that the spirit of hell is present. The spirit demons feed on the fears of men, whether believers or unbelievers, they draw life and they draw strength from the fears of men. Number two, the spirit of discontentment. Number three, the spirit of pride. And number four, the spirit of foolishness. I am going to emphasize in this broadcast the spirit of fear and the spirit of pride. I want you to understand very quickly, you will find out that fear is an emotional experience or an emotional experience in anticipation of specific pain, that something is going to go wrong with you somehow. And as a result, it is fear turned in inside out. A number of things are true of fear. Fear does the following. Number one, fear of men made Abraham lie. You will see that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 11 to 20. The fear of failure. Moses rejected a divine assignment because he did not see the possibility of bringing out God's people out of the land of bondage. Number three, fear closes our spirit to seeing divine help or possibility to the supernatural. You remember the widow of Zarephath when Elijah stood in front of her. We did not see in the Bible that she was shocked at this man. She didn't think Elijah was a strange man. So certainly she had a measure of understanding of who Elijah was. But we find out also that she was afraid for her life, although she had expected to die after eating the last meal, but fear was still present if Elijah ate this and she had nothing to eat. Fear will shut your eyes to the help of God that is available for you. And this is very essential. You also need to understand that the spirit of fear makes men concede defeat without a fight. We will see this numerous times in the book of Joshua chapter 17 verse 14, Psalm 78 verse 9 to 10. The Bible says the children of Ephraim, they were quick for battle. In the day of battle, they turned back. They turned back not because God was not on their side. They turned back not because they had not been equipped. They turned back because they were afraid. The spirit of fear inspires wrong words, wrong confession, and a verbalization of negative events. And these become instruments in the hands of the devil for your attack. Number six, the spirit of fear makes people accept help from the wrong places. And in some instance, it closes the door on divine help. Once you have turned to the wrong place, you go to the shrine or you go to a herbalist to receive help. You cannot expect God to give you help in that instance without repenting and denouncing the works of darkness. Number seven, fear can get you stranded in God's program. Amen. You find out Moses had the rod. He cried unto the Lord and the, the instructions of God came to him. If he was so afraid that he was overwhelmed by the opposition in front of him, he would not have heard what God wanted him to do, neither would he be able to take any action. Now quickly, I want to talk to you quickly about the spirit of pride. The Bible tells us that God resists the proud. Pride will do the following to you. Pride will make you overestimate your own ability and blur your senses to your own limitation. Usually that is suicide. Wherever the spirit of pride is present, you have seen the spirit of suicide at work because God would not render help to a man that lives in pride. Number two, pride makes you go unhelped by God in a time of trouble. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Amen? Pride makes you the target of the spirit of destruction because the Bible says that God resists the proud. You know what it means when God himself is the one resisting a man. There is no hope for that man anywhere. Number three, pride in the way we think, planning without putting God first will make us waste many time and make God stay long without being able to do anything for us. Pride will not allow for God's instruction to come across to you and in some instance will make God's instruction sound foolish to you and will make you go unhelped by God. So the Bible says that God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. What is grace? By definition, grace is a supernatural empowerment, the supernatural influence upon the heart of a man. In other words, the Lord influences your heart by his own grace and helps you to do the need for. Understand, pride is an enemy that you don't want to contend with. May the Lord keep you. Till another time, stay blessed.